Hello everyone. A few weeks ago, I chanced upon a video of a couple of metal guitarists who were vegan and they found out that their guitars had bone nuts so they found a guitar company that did not use any animal products in their guitars. That was interesting for these dudes to go that far for their veganism. That also gave me an idea for a video. What makes a guitar vegan? Now a disclaimer, I'm not vegan, I consume my share of animal protein. But I also try to be reasonable. I avoid extravagance such as shark's fin soup where a shark is caught and only its fins are taken and used and the rest of the shark is thrown back to sea to die. That's like cutting off a man's ears for a soup and throwing the rest of the dude out. Only the man gets to walk and see another day, unlike the shark which will die without its fins. I am also aware that consuming animal protein means that some nice animal died for me so I don't eat as much meat as before. Also, for the sake of context, if you found a shell by the beach or a bone in the desert and made a guitar part out of them, that's fair game. But if you bought that from a store or from someone, that probably means that some poor creature died for the sake of commerce and rock and roll. So let's find some animal parts in guitars. Let's start from the top. For the headstock logo fancy guitars, some guitar companies use mother of pearl which comes from seashells. Mother of pearl or nacre lies just below the functional surface of the shell and is usually used in the headstock badges and as fretboard markers. As you can probably imagine, these shells aren't very big so to cover a large area we will need several shells or a very big one. How do we know it's real mother of pearl? The coloration is irregular and no two pieces are identical just like this. If it's pearlescent white, it probably comes from the pearl oyster. Pearls are from mother of pearl so technically vegans shouldn't be wearing pearls. Cultured pearls are little plastic balls which took a few years to be covered with mother of pearl while natural pearls are almost totally made of mother of pearl. Pearls that aren't white come from other species of shells. So how about this? This is just plastic made to look like mother of pearl, what guitarists jokingly call mother of toilet seat. However, on more modern guitars, the guitar makers use a kind of plastic called perloid, which simulates the iridescence and color irregularity of mother of pearl, just like these. So unless we're really asking for mother of pearl, almost all modern guitars will be using perloid plastic. While we are at big guards, this is called tortoise shell. Does this really come from the tortoise? No, this is just plastic, but about a hundred years ago, tortoise shell actually came from real tortoises. However, some music stores sell guitar picks that are real tortoise shell. They're usually some shade of brown and have irregular coloration. Going back to the top, the tuning keys are usually made of plastic or metal, so no creatures here. For the nut, several materials are used such as plastic, graphite, brass, stainless steel, bone, horn, and fossil ivory. Tusk nuts that come from Graftec is a high-density manufactured plastic, not to be mistaken as ivory which comes from elephant or mammoth or walrus tusks. We all know where bone and horn come from, and fossil ivory is from the tusks of fossilized elephants and mammoths. But unless we are paleontologists, it would be hard to tell the difference between newer ivory and fossil ivory just by looking at these items. So why all this fuss on nut materials? There's a video of Paul Reed Smith tossing some nuts on the counter, and based on the sound they make when they fall to the counter, some seem to have more fidelity than others. The first issue is about the material. Some people claim if the nut is a good material, the sound from the strings ring truer than cheap materials. So if they have a nice plink as they fall on the counter, in theory, they are going to be a better nut. The second issue is lubrication. If the nut material is rough, the string may tend to get stuck, causing intonation problems meaning a homogeneous, hard, and smooth material would be ideal for a nut. As for me, this nut business is not a big deal. Where I stand on this issue is not important. 
I'm more concerned about how little time I have left to practice playing the guitar. Plastic nuts are fine with me. But a tip that I can share with you is that if you have a cheap plastic nut and you don't want to be spending on a new nut, take a pencil and rub it into the grooves to allow the graphite in the pencil to lubricate the nut. The graphite will help prevent the strings from getting stuck in the nut. For acoustic guitars, the material on the nut may also be the same material on the bridge. So if the nut is bone, it's likely that the bridge may also be bone. Moving on to the neck, if the fretboard is a different material from the neck, and if the neck is set or glued to the body, then a type of glue is being used to connect these parts together. Before the 21st century, the glue that was used to stick these pieces together was hide glue, which comes from animal hide, or fish glue, which comes from fish bones. I don't know which guitar companies are still using animal glue, and I also don't know when they stopped using it. However, many luthiers or guitar craftsmen and repairmen still use hide glue, so if we're vegan, we might need to tell our favorite luthier not to use animal glue. Likewise, an animal product might be lurking in our guitar finish. Some guitar finishes might be shellac, which comes from lac, a resin secreted by the lac bug, an insect in the forests of Thailand and India. As the insects feed on their host plants, they secrete these resins to make tunnels where their food is. As the resin is harvested, the bugs get harvested as well and die in the processing of the resin. So if we're having our guitar finished or repaired, we need to tell our luthier to avoid shellac. And oh, by the way, this resin is also used in a popular jelly bean to give them that shine. The truth sucks, doesn't it? I think I've covered most, if not all, of the animal products in our guitars. Since we've covered animals, let's look briefly at the other living thing where guitars come from. Has anyone ever wondered why the budget guitar industry moved from South Korea to Indonesia? This. Indonesia has 94 times more forest area than South Korea, and probably cheaper labor. So aside from Cloyster, Filbert, and Manny, Treebird also has to die for our guitars. This is a mahogany tree, and this is a rosewood tree. I'm just showing you what gets cut down for our rock and roll dreams. Now let's do the numbers. It takes about 6 board feet of wood to make a guitar. A mahogany tree with a trunk that's about a foot in diameter, or 30 centimeters, makes about 90 board feet. Let's cut off around 10% for unsuitable lumber because guitars are a bit picky with wood quality, so we're down to 80 board feet. One tree of the size just mentioned can make about 13 guitars. Now in the US alone, in 2021, 1,850,000 guitars were sold. That's just the US which contributes to 25% of total global guitar sales. That's 7,400,000 guitars sold worldwide in 2021. Putting the numbers together, that means in 2021, almost 570,000 trees were cut down for our hobby. That's roughly 220 hectares of forest. How big is that? That's 426 American football fields or 319 international football or soccer fields. And let's not forget that this is just one year. Granted, 2021 was a bounty year for the guitar industry because everyone was in lockdown and many wanted to learn or relearn the guitar because they couldn't go out or do anything else. Before I go any further, I am guilty of the same crime of getting just one more guitar. So this is as much a reminder to myself as it is a word of caution to the rest of us. I don't want to be a buzzkill to anyone having their eye on another guitar, and I don't want to disappoint the guitar industry, but everything in moderation and reason, I guess. It's none of my business if anyone wants to buy another guitar. I'm just saying, let's set some practical limits because resources are being used up for every new guitar, granted that we have the money and the storage space for it. I understand the attraction and the addiction but it's still unreasonable. I'm sure the guitar companies will figure out another way to make us buy their guitars. There must be a way where we can enjoy our hobby, for the supply of our instruments to be there when we need it, and for the guitar companies to keep going without killing too many living creatures, both animal and plant. This is for all the guitarists out there, myself included, and not just the vegans. 
At least after this video, the vegans will be guided on what it takes to have a meatless guitar. But this is also a reminder that the rest of us have to be reasonable and responsible also. Anywho, keep rocking. Thank you for your time and I hope to see you on my next video.